here we are with a blast from the past. We're now getting into more vintage tubs, which I believe is what you guys wanted. This is a fun tub. This is the stuff for the heart is, I think, for a lot of the viewers, including myself, which would therefore be I'm a viewer because I'm editing it. Yes, that makes sense. Cuties. This is what you guys wanted to see right off the bat. This is Mattel's answer to girl toys of muscles. Muscles were extremely popular, sold very well. In Japan, they are Kinikuman, and they got a hell of a lot more of those wrestlers than we ever did. So Mattel sat back and said, you know what? Let's do some girl things. And they made cuties, which are pretty much just women doing things of the 80s. And that's about it. There was nothing super unique or special, like a twist to it, that muscle had with wrestling. I don't know if they did well. There was just one series. But pretty much I have these because they all came from Evans. So there you go. Dollar. One dollar. How can I just say no? So when I get vintage 80s toys, even oddball stuff like this, if you're paying so little and you're getting like, I probably bought like 30 of these, 40 of these from the store for a buck each. Just keep one of each. Might as well. Right? They're dead mint, clean shape, buck each. Hell yeah. <laughs> so we got a, quite a pile of here. And some, these are pretty cool. This is the uh, music set, which is actually pretty cool right there. Guitar girl, drum girl, the mohawk. I'll take back what I said. I haven't examined these for quite some time, but those are pretty unique looking characters. Versus we have wrestler. We have ballerina and book reading and just people chilling. And we just have aerobics. And then we have just people doing their stuff. These are actually pretty cool. I'm actually not going to lie. But most of the market on cuties at this point will probably be about 10 bucks each. It's a line that's not collected and kind of just disappeared into time. But you guys want to see these guys. You mighty monster cycles. Hell yeah. This is the stuff that I would go to a toy show in the mid 2000s and the person would have all the star wars stuff up on high and all this oddball stuff will be in the box below you pop it out and they'd be like ah three bucks each like you just pick it up because it was awesome fair price and then <laughs> look where we are all these years later there's like a group of people there's a facebook group out there probably just designated to mighty monster cycles and some guy now has these in a special showcase in his collection which I'm not going against. I'm just saying like how far we've come from being the junker toys in the bottom of the box to the best of the best at times. Awesome knockoff to an extent. Play power. With the little elephant down there. I just like how just this guy looks. And at first my thoughts were those were bug eyes, but I just see now those are horns. <laughs> we have two of these. Look at that set. Hell yeah, they look so happy. So I guess this is all four. Kmart, $3.99. Basic artwork. But again, this is just unique, fun stuff of that time. This is probably going to still be early 90s. But there's no reason to sell it. I just like this weird stuff. And I think you guys do too. I wish they were posable versus PVC. But you can't have it all, right guys? I do wonder what the market is. As I was saying earlier, there's going to be some guys out there who are diehard for this stuff. But they are still PVCs. So therefore, they're not action figures. So they get kind of knocked down a few notches on the collectability scale. But we'll find out. And now we are to Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. So most of this Ghostbusters stuff was purchased by myself, obviously. Time show, time-wise, same thing. Mid-2000s. You'd walk into a show. People would have this stuff. Shh, it was cheap. I mean, right off the bat, look at this. $10. 10 bucks. That's all it was. It's not flawless. It's not perfect. I'm still happy with it. A little bubble ding and all that. 10 bucks. And for the longest time, even to the mid-2010s, this was like 15, 20 bucks. And then the whole market just shopped the cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs land, which is a phrase I've always been using for a long time. 
So I don't have much Ghostbusters. I always kept walking around the shows going like, oh, they're 20 bucks each now for Fright Features. I'll get them next time. I, it's, I ran out of room a long time ago, as you guys have already noticed. So I regret heavily not picking up more of this stuff by a long shot because I'm not paying a hundred and a quarter for Fright Features packaged anymore. Let's put it that way. Then we have my favorite from previous videos. It is the Spookus. Spookus. Jimmy Mogoblash. Wunderbar. Hell yeah. I would pay a girl to speak German. Just read this package to me. Absolutely fantastic. This is a German package. They were not called haunted humans. They were called Spookus. It's not like a venereal disease. The one you want to give to others. I just love this. It was my favorite of the haunted humans was the trash terror. And I just loved like the insect, how big he be. I never got him, to be honest with you. I was one of those kids that would stare at all the toys in the toy store for 30 minutes and looked them all over and then was able to choose one. So I remember looking at this guy for so long and never getting him. So he's kind of a personal fave. Look at all those guys back there. Awesome. God, everything is just so amazing. Kenner just knocked it out of the ballpark. Hell yeah. Oh, ah. Mm. So again, this probably was like 10 bucks and you would just walk into a toy show. And at that time, I was shopping at a toy show called King County in Illinois. And it was, a, it was one of the biggest toy shows and still is very big in the U.S. And there was Atlantic City, which in the 90s and 2000s, which I've never been to, was also very huge. But King County and Atlantic City were big enough to bring in international sellers. Not so much anymore, to be honest with you, especially Atlantic City. I don't think even the show exists anymore. But point being is you would go to King County, especially the 90s when I was like really young, let's say, you would walk around and you would find international sellers from Japan, from France, from Germany. I mean, we can go on a huge list and they'd bring all this stuff over. And to, compared, to the, compared to today's prices, absolutely just insane. Like Lulu Berlou Toys from France would set up at King County. They brought over cases of sealed G1 Autobot cars for like 60 bucks each. And they'd stack them. Doom, 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 doom. I mean, it was just, that was the magical time when it was like 10, 15 plus years later after the toys came out where the cases were being opened up, brought out. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get like, you know, 50 bucks each. This is way more than retail costs. And, you know, regards, granted, I was a kid, so I didn't have the money, but I'm still happy with what I bought. So this is kind of weird. I have... No Ghostbusters in the U.S. packages, really. I love, of course, the buggy. But it's hilarious that I have it all international. So let's go through these guys. Ecto-3, more of an oddball piece, a go-kart. But they need that price point for a vehicle to be a lower budget for kids to pick up versus the more expensive $15 plus. This probably was like 10 bucks in the store to 12 bucks. Sealed, dead stock, German... Fang, I'm not going to try this. I'm going to butcher the language. But that's okay. Nice prototype there. But th this is stuff that I probably picked up from one seller at Kane County. And they were probably like, as I said, 25 bucks each. And you're like, yeah, I'll buy all you have this time. We have an Ecto-2, which is much nicer. This one, for some reason, is more in my mind as a collector and as a kid than the Ecto-3. And I don't know why Peter's flailing the background about the die and Ray's like, whatever, it's so cute. But yeah, that's actually not the best artwork compared to what Kenner's standards are used to. But then again, it is an animated series, so they don't have to be as realistic. But anyways, still sealed. Uh, box is not flawless, but again, what am I going to do, complain? In this day and age, this market just shot up like crazy. Oh, guys, check this out. The... Uh, Ecto-3 has not suitable for children under 36. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, months due to small parts. Sorry about that. I was about to just toss this in the ocean because I was like, well, I guess it doesn't apply to most of us. We have... Oh, wow, these are all like imports. Maybe I picked them up from a guy in the U.S. Ecto-500 just was weird, in my opinion, but it had to have that play value. I wish they painted most of the PVC figures. They're all just... All these 
they were always unpainted, and that's kind of sad. Still sealed, but the tape's slowly drying up on the sides there. But again, I'm still happy to have these, though I prefer to have U.S. boxes. We have Micro Machines, the collection three of deluxe. Why am I doing it with a German accent? As a child, one of my favorites, the Micro Machines, because they can lift the little doors up. I mean, this made a huge difference, in, you know, when you're a kid. This is a world. I would have preferred the Lamborghini. Like everybody else, I'm kind of a little bit of a Lamborghini aficionado. Okay, not really. I do really like Micro Machines. I have a, a fair amount of loose ones, but I never got diehard into them. I never sat back and got every collection and looked them over. I, I have a nice collection, but nothing really packaged and none of the play sets, but they're really nice. I had quite a number of them as a kid. I think a lot of you guys did too. The market is substantial. I mean, it's extremely fair. I mean, there are going to be rare ones that do go for pretty money. Some European exclusives, some prototypes, obviously. But in general, most of this market, loose especially, you guys can start collecting this stuff, have a great time learning all about it, collecting variants, and it will not hurt your pocketbook. It's, it's still an untapped 80s toy line that's just a really fair price and a big collector community. So, like, a part of you wants to kind of, like, dive further into it a little bit more in the future. But, uh, you know, not at this point in time. But, man. And, and, again, it really comes down to action figures versus car, toy cars in general. And that's just how it is. I mean, Hot Wheels is its own beast. But Micro Machines, just, it's collected. But they made a lot of them. So, there's a lot out there. But it's nice to have a package one like this, nonetheless. I think that's probably one worth like 20 bucks, probably. But that's fine. I don't have too many package ones. And it's nice to keep them like that. And then we're back to the Ghostbusters. So we have French and German. Like, I couldn't get a boxed U.S. sealed one. I got the weird ones. Again, I love creatures and monsters and all that stuff. So, you know, as a kid, I'd stare at this one in the store and be like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, check that out that is just it's so simple the transformation and again you got a vehicle that automatically transforms into its own ghost monster which is more than the rest of the vehicles we've handled the ecto-3 the ecto-500 this is the stuff that would call to me as a kid look at that i am not even going to try to pronunciate any of this stuff but we'll do the geister kalfa Auto Vanto Seats in Kong Giscafa. Oh my god. So this is great. It's dead stock sealed. Not gonna let it go. Prefer a US one, but I have no idea what the market on these. It's probably like a hundred and a quarter each, 150 each. And then we have La Auto Fantasma. This sounds a hell of a lot cooler. Which sounds a lot more sensible, a lot more softer. Or a, a new French vehicle is coming out. It's called La Auto Fantasma. <laughs> Everything else is pretty much the same. Still a really fun piece. The prototype was actually, I believe, a little bit different with the head sculpt and a little bit more poseable. But, you know, they scaled things back to make it cheaper and more cost efficient. It's still just amazing that they chose to make a VW bug that turns into a bug. Of all the creative ideas, all the prototyping and concept artwork, this made it all the way through to production. I... I'm not unhappy with that. I'm just still kind of surprised, like, the direction it went. You know, a VW bug, not a sports car. Got to be a bug. Like, okay, bugs, kids love bugs. This is great stuff. Okay, we're going to have a turtle's tub coming up. Or did I post it already? Let's find out. <laughs> 